Lake. This is perhaps one of Canada's most beautiful alpine lakes with its stunning turquoise glacial waters and large snow-capped rugged mountains at its heels. Its interior is filled with rushing streams and babbling brooks that feed into the lake, delving through the mossy floor. Lying just off the border of British Columbia and Alberta, this beautiful valley contains many hidden treasures. And if you walk around the shores and look even closer, you'll catch some small forms of wildlife. This squirrel is harvesting small pine cones to store for the upcoming winter. It is though quite lazy in its harvesting methods. This squirrel's not at a loss for pine cones. Nature is everywhere. God's creations are all around us, even though we don't really notice them or realize how awesome they really are. It is because of this that we often don't think enough about animals and how we change their lifestyles and homes in negative ways. Our goal today is to fascinate you with some of BC's most amazing wildlife and share some of their unique behaviors with you. From feeding baby cranes to prancing coyotes. will take you through many of BC's unique habitats, as well as allow you to look at Canada's creatures in a new close-up and personal manner. This is truly wild British Columbia. High up in Manning Park's alpine environments, the world is full of beauty. But here, on Black Bull Peak, at the viewpoint known as Cascade Lookout, there is an abundance of life. Clark's nutcrackers flock in numbers to feed on nuts and seeds, distributed by tourists and visitors. They find perches where they can monitor food sources. Often, they will not eat their treats right away, but rather store them in small pockets beneath their tongue to allow them to keep nuts and seeds for the upcoming winter. They are not the only creatures intent on feeding here though. Yellow pine chipmunks are one of the prime inhabitants of this lookout, and they are not as shy as their feathery friends. They will feed on seeds to their heart's content. They must be cautious though. The nutcrackers are feisty and if they decide to fly down and make the trip for food, the chipmunks mustn't be in their way. There is one more rodent though, that dines here on a daily basis. Meet the Cascade Golden Mantled Ground Squirrel. I know, it's a really long name, but these rodents are similar to their smaller cousins, but lack stripes on their face and are slightly bulkier. Sometimes it is possible to feed them by hand when they're around, of course.
Northern river otters are numerous throughout British Columbia and are not limited by ocean habitats. These otters can be found inland near rivers, as their name suggests. This otter has picked up a tasty morsel and looks to be quite enjoying it. It methodically chews off chunks of fish flesh with an air of delight and joy. These creatures are also quite playful. This basking otter and salmon arm does the boogie boogie to dry off. If it hears a sudden noise though, it must stop and investigate. Breed calls are a source of annoyance, but are necessary to identify nonetheless. Eventually, this boogieing session is done and the otter dives into the water once more. There is a bird though that acts the exact opposite when it comes to hunting and basking. The great blue herons of the Fraser River Delta are the picture of seriousness and utter concentration. This young heron has much to learn. Slowly the heron gets into position and scans the water. He needs to strike at the exact moment the fish is within reach. Missed him! However, there are many fish around. This heron has lots of time for practice. One heron in particular is the master of hunting fish. He hunts on a large log that floats over the water. This is particularly good because fish won't be able to spot him and these still waters provide a perfect place to see signs of movement below. All it takes is for a fish to come within range of the heron's fatal beak. Got one! He waits until a slippery prize has stopped squirming before eating it whole. Now with food in his stomach, the heron may rest easy. In the southern area of British Columbia, bighorn sheep roam the grasslands of Penticton. This one family in particular watches over their little one. The mama is eventually attracted, though, by the sights and sounds of the herd below. Leaving the father to care for the young one. Evidently, Junior is not okay with this. He walks down the rocky slopes to catch up with her. He is limping and something has caused him to have a leg injury. That creates walking through the rocks a very difficult task. Down in the herd though, things are heating up. When the sheep are not searching for food, they are trying to avoid the alpha male and leader of the herd. 
Unfortunately, it happens to be mating season and the alpha male is intent on finding another mate. This is no easy task though. When he gets fired up by his testosterone as he is now, determining the correct gender of his peers is not clear. So he has to test all of them by sniffing their rear ends or kicking their crotches. As he resumes his search, it is clear that other males are not interested in him and neither are the females, for that matter. Most members of his herd, though, are younger, and they stay together to forage and feed on the drying grass. For the most part, they can avoid the lead male and his strange antics. They must soon move on, though, in search of better food, high up in the hills of their vast domain. The family, too, must follow and join the herd in search for a better haven to stay at during the winter. In Radium, by the Rocky Mountains, lives another small herd of sheep that grazes near the highway. It is summer, and these sheep rely on tough grasses and bushes that the valleys have to offer. Life becomes a search for the best greens and sprouts. Here in these plentiful mountains where grass is in abundance? Well, that shouldn't be too hard. Vancouver, British Columbia. Here lies the perfect habitat and sanctuary for birds of all shapes and sizes. geese will flock here in numbers to forage and live out the warm summer days. Also, due to the size of these numerous wetlands, predators are few and far between. There is, though, one bird here that towers above and dominates all others, the Sandhill Crane, British Columbia's largest and most majestic bird. This is their safe haven where they can live in relative peace. This mother and father crane have a hard task of feeding their offspring. The chick relies on both its parents to support it and to get enough food.
Because these cranes are omnivorous, they are able to collect various grubs and insects as a good food source. So now, it's just a matter of who to get food from. Mum or Dad? Unfortunately, this much effort is an aspect of everyday life for crane parents. Deep in the heart of the Rockies, far in the southeastern corner of the province, lives a very different type of animal. This strange alien call belongs to one of the largest animals that roam these old forests, the elk or wapiti. This bull elk is in deep distress. It lies on the muddy ground of a ditch beside the road. Perhaps it is one of its large antlers that causes some irritation. Or perhaps it may be agitated due to something else. Whatever the cause may be, he is having some trouble. Eventually, he summons the strength to heave his large bulk up and walk towards the forest. It hesitates. Before charging victoriously into the woods, The woods of British Columbia are also home to packs of predators. These coyotes relish the day by chasing each other around the undergrowth and sniffing out their territory. This small group lives in a rural, suburban environment. Members communicate by calling to each other in long barks, growls, and wails. These coyotes must be careful though, as they do not form packs and typically hunt only in groups of up to three individuals. As well, here in places where food is literally everywhere, there are no shortages of coyotes seeking to steal from others. This individual ensures that the others don't care to visit by marking the grass. So, when you are able to detect others from a mile away, it is easy to sense the presence of an intruder anyways. The ponds and sloughs hidden throughout British Columbia are usually dull and swampy. However, at certain times of the year, even they can receive little color. In the summer, 
mating season is taken very seriously by the ruddy ducks. These odd-looking ducks are perhaps one of Canada's most comical birds, with their large blue tails, bright blue bills, and stoic appearance. Males display themselves by batting their bills against their inflated necks, that in turn produce a bubbling effect on the water. These noises formed by the churning water and the duck's own belts like mating calls are common sounds at this time of year. Here, in this particular pond, located by an old industrial warehouse, proves to be one of the most successful places to find these elusive ducks. Here, females seem to flock around the males more freely, as well as watch the performances with interest. Oddly enough, ruddy duck eggs are proportionally the largest of all waterfowl with their odd behaviors, ludicrous courtship displays, and unique habits, these birds are truly appealing to naturalists all across the globe. And here, you can find them almost anywhere. Up high in the mountains lives a solitary predator. Its name is fear among most Canadians. The cougar, or mountain lion. This one gives its paws a small bath. Soon it will be time to find supper and search for a tasty morsel among the grass. These brother and sister cougars have resided here for some time, staying near their den for protection. They communicate with small yowls and purrs. The brother and sister seem to be especially vocal. One of them decides to take up residence outside the den and keep watch over the hill. Winter is a bitterly cold and frozen affair at Deep Creek in the Okanagan Valley. Snow blankets the ground and ice forms along the edges of the riverside. But here, nestle among the rocks that jet over the icy, frigid currents, an amazingly resourceful bird can be found. This drab, plump bird will live among these waters throughout the entire year, from the hot summer days that render these hills dry and dusty, to the icy months that you can see now. The American Dipper is right at home with these conditions, frolicking and diving through the water. 
At this time of year, the metabolic rates are significantly lower and their blood contains higher levels of oxygen. It occasionally pauses to sit on a rock and match the rhythm of the water with its small form before flying to a different spot. They might not look like much, but these birds are one of the most adaptable and courageous birds in North America. And here at Hardy Falls, where this section of the river ends, is also where our journey through British Columbia ends. We have taken you through much of the province and shown you many of its remarkable creatures that make us proud to call BC our home. And when these animals are thriving and doing well, many animals are declining and their numbers are growing smaller due to the negative impacts that we cause to take place on this earth. Just imagine what would happen if every one of us were to realize the full extent and beauty of God's creation and to do something about it. This world would be a much better place if we were to give more thought to plants and animals. After all, what would it be without them?